Now, the second part of the slide, I called it similar to the question 62, because question 62 is about, about SASC, something, something close to this. It says whether the column space of my matrix, which is equivalently span of the set S, is equal to the whole vector space F4, or R4, or C4, or Q4. How can we answer that question? We can answer that question basing on what we discussed on the slide before on this comparison theorem. Because what we can say is this. On one hand, the whole F4 space is spanned by my standard basis vectors, E1, E2, and E4, E1, E2, E3, E4. That's on one hand. And we know this is a basis. We know this is linearly independent. On the other hand, actually, I should say that I try to argue by contradiction. Um, my objective to say that this is this cannot happen, that this is not true. So I'm assuming this is true for a second. I'm arguing by contradiction. I'm assuming this is true. Then I'm saying this. On one hand, F4 is a span of my standard basis vectors. On the other hand, if I assume this is true, my F4, which is span of S, because I'm assuming this is true, is also span of B, which is a set of three vectors. So on the other hand, I have this. And here's my contradiction. Because you see, I'm spanning the same, I'm spanning the same vector space, F4, because this is also F4. Oh, wrong one. This is also F4. If I assume this is true. So you see, I'm, I'm spanning the same vector space with the two different sets of linearly independent vectors, and they're having different number of vectors. That's a contradiction with my comparison theorem from the previous slide. So my assumption that this could be true is wrong. This is rather rather detailed explanation, actually. Later on, probably, you will resor resort to something shorter by saying, we know that F4 dimension 4, so we cannot span it with the three linearly independent vectors. It will be acceptable argument, acceptable, acceptable argument, yes. But you have to understand that when you say dimension, effectively you're just referring to this comparison theorem, which says it's vector space, if it's spanned with these two linearly independent sets, the number of elements must be there identical, identical to something which we now call dimension. And that's why the answer here is no, actually. Any questions? Uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, in this sort of context, you may often meet the uh, continuation of the question, which says, OK, we now we see we're unable to spend the whole F4 with these three vectors. We're unable to spend my F4 with these three vectors, meaning that the column space of matrix A is not equal to four-dimensional space. But the question goes then to ask you, what if what we should add, what we should throw in extra into this set, into this set, in order to actually span the whole F4? Or the question may go the other way. It may say, uh, find the spanning set for the F4, which has as much as possible, as many as possible elements from the column from this set. And normally you approach this question like this. You make this observation. You make this observation. Uh, well, you say something like this, because F4 itself is spanned by the standard basis vector. If you take this 5, if you take these 5 vectors and you combine them with these 4, so if altogether you take 9 vectors, these 9 together, they will span the whole F4, because just the last 4 vectors spanning the 4-dimensional space F4. So if you take the 9 together, they also will span the same space. Now, here we are, all 9 vectors in symbolic form. If I put them in augmented matrix as columns, here they are, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and here my 4, e1, e2, e3, and e4. 
So you're saying, you, now you're saying this, of course, we, we now know that this 5, they do not span F4. We just disproved that. But if I throw extra 4 vectors into this, into this lot, this 4, then they will span the whole F4. What we will what we lose, we'll lose linearly independence. Well, actually, this one also wasn't linearly independent. This set was linearly independent by itself, but when you combine them with this set, they no longer linearly independent. And now you come back to the question. Now you have this larger matrix for which the column space is the F4. And now you come back to the same question as 61. From this larger matrix, you now have to extract the smallest subset of linearly independent column, which span the same set as the original column space. And that's again case for the row echelon form. I will again it's, it's, it's a huge matrix. And you will never you will never be asked to do this by hand, even like in test or something. You have to use something. And I use again the if I use the computer stuff, look look, I'm gonna write this because I want to reduce the amount of things you copy from the screen. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna call this matrix U. If I use the same set of operations as in here, in this reduction, left-hand side will go to this matrix U. So my row echelon form will be like this, U on the left-hand side, some other V matrix on the right-hand side, and this V matrix from, my, from the computer algebra system, it is like this. First row, 1, 0, 0, 0. Second row, 0, 1, 0, 0. Uh, third one is 1, double 0, negative 1. And the last one, negative 6, negative 2, negative 2, 4. I found this matrix by, I did this typing when I was preparing this slide. I took this whole matrix, really huge one. I sent it to the row echelon form. Left-hand side ended up the same as in here. Right-hand side is like this. I wrote it in this way because I want to, to copy as, least, as little as possible of these numbers from the slide. Now, what we can see now. How many uh, or which of these columns are linearly independent? We have to choose the columns which correspond to the pivots in my row echelon form. On the left hand side, it will be the same set of pivots, so it will be the same set of vectors x1, x3, x4. But on the right hand side, here's my pivot. So on the right hand side, I choose the vector e1. So what I'm saying is that if I throw extra E1 vector into my B set, this will be basis for the whole four-dimensional F4 space, which reuses as many as possible elements from my original set S. And that's where the, that's where the second part finishes. Any questions?